all. Good morning. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it on this Palm Sunday as we kick off the most sacred week of the year for us as followers of Jesus, Holy Week. If you please open your bulletins, there's a few announcements to share with you this morning. First of all is page three, and that is our Holy Week schedule. So you will notice on Monday, Thursday, we have our Holy Communion services at both noon and 7.30. The noon service will be live streamed. Also then on Good Friday uh, with our church choir at the Tenebrae service, which is eight o'clock Friday night. And then of course, next Sunday is our Easter Sunday schedule. Our sunrise service is at seven o'clock, so there is no eight o'clock, it is shift to seven o'clock. And then we have our Easter breakfast, and that will be supporting Regan Ream, who is going to be doing a month in the Dominican Republic with her mission work. That description is written for you there at the bottom of page three. I hope you can all come and support that very, very special occasion that will be with us. Then, um, of course, the 1030 service that will be following. On page four, just a congratulations to Matt and Taylor Evans on the birth of their son, Reed Robert Evans. So we are truly happy for the family. Also then, on the last Sunday of the month is our annual congregational meeting. The annual reports are at various locations throughout the church, so please make note of that as well. A final note for you, and that is we all have an invite card. Uh, this is to help uh, you practice a little evangelism there. And quite honestly, uh, guests are God's gift. And so our win, our goal is for 10 first-time guests to come to the church here. And we do this for, for primarily two reasons. Uh, first of all, is that we can help a person introduce them to Christ or to deepen their relationship with Christ and to be able to share the good news of Jesus. That is absolutely paramount. But secondarily then would be that perhaps uh, looking for a church home and to establish a relationship with Christ church and to help foster and deepen that faith along the way and to make uh, some new friends and fellowship as well. So this is um, a prayerful challenge to you that if you have not through, thought through on who it is that you could invite to Easter Sunday, I invite you to do so. We still have a week in order to be able to do that. Well, now at this time, our choir is going to uh, lead us in the choir, choral introit, and then we will have our Palm Sunday gathering. Please turn with me to your bulletin insert for the gathering. I invite you to stand at this time. With insert in one hand and palm branch in the other. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Mercifully assist us, O Lord God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts whereby you have given us life everlasting. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now after Jesus had said this, he went on ahead going up to Jerusalem. And when he had come near Bethphage and Bethany at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of the disciples, saying, Go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been written. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Just say this, the Lord needs it. So those who were sent departed and found it as he had told them. And as they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, why are you untying the colt? And they said, the Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus. And after throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. And as he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road. And as he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, 
the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Rabbi, teacher, order your disciples to stop. And he answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Please raise your palms. We praise and thank you, O God, for the great acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. On this day, he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was acclaimed Son of David and King of Kings by those who scattered their garments and branches of palm in his path. We ask that you bless these branches and those who bear them and grant that we may ever hail them as our Lord and King and follow him with perfect confidence through the same Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of the Lord. In 344, all glory, Lord, and honor. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, the mercy and might, in the mystery of the passion of your Son, you offer your infinite life to the world. Gather us around the cross of Christ and preserve us until the resurrection through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. It is now time for Noah's Park Children's Church. reading comes from the book of Isaiah, the 50th chapter. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backwards. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me, who will declare me guilty. Going, doing the right thing. And that's the whole point that Jesus was bringing up. When you and I are faced with a situation, Jesus will ask you the question, what does it look like to do good in this scenario? What is doing the right thing for you? You see, being right is all about you. But doing good doing the right thing is about the other person. And I think that's what Jesus is driving home towards. 
Jesus is helping us understand what does love require of us. So, the genius of Jesus, he makes the profound so painfully obvious. With each of his encounters, he made the right thing to do so clear. Do the good that is right in front of you, knowing that's the right thing to do. It may seem simple, but it's a stroke of genius. And that then, with the genius of Jesus, brings us to Holy Week. Today, we celebrate Christ's triumphal entry into the holy city of Jerusalem. People waving palm branches, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. They celebrate him as king, as Messiah. He will deliver them from the power of Rome. But what they don't understand is Jesus came to deliver them from an even greater power. And you and I as well that of Satan and of sin and of death. On Monday, Jesus goes to the temple and he overturns the tables of the money changers as the religious authorities are cheating the people. He says, no more of this, for my father's house is to be a house of prayer. On Tuesday then, he tells them parables and he warns the people about the coming destruction of the temple, which happens indeed in 70 A.D. On Wednesday, we don't know what went on. The four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, are silent. On Thursday, on Thursday, we see Jesus in the upper room with his 12 disciples. And there they are during the Passover meal. Christ introduces the very first Holy Communion. And then they depart from that room. And we have the depiction that is in our window of at the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus and, as you see, uh, the three closest disciples, his inner circle, sleeping on the job, Peter, James, and John, and then the city of Jerusalem in the background. Christ is in the Mount of Olives. This is an incredible window that we have here, folks. It teaches us so much. See, if, if you're in boot camp, say at Paris Island or in San Diego, in becoming a Marine, your final days are what's known as the crucible, in which you go without sleep for a long period of time, without eating for a long period of time, and your physical exertion, it is brutal. But if you make it, you become a Marine. That is their crucible their make or break moment. And that's what this is for our Lord Jesus. He doesn't have to go through this for us. Really doesn't. And so he says to God in prayer, I mean, he is sweating bullets, literally drops, droplets of blood, as Luke tells us. And the whole point here is this. Father, let this cup pass from me, this cup of suffering, yet not my will, but your will be done. Talk about trust, faith, grit, and guts. And then Friday, this coming Friday, Good Friday. Because Jesus knew it was the right thing to do. It was the good thing to do. To be crucified on your behalf and on mine. And then Easter Sunday, but we're going to hold off on that one. Let's not let the cat out of the bag too much. Because that's a week from today. And that's a whole other celebration in and of itself. Now, what we heard Marilyn share with us just a few moments ago from the Apostle Paul in Philippians. And Paul says, in being found in human form, he humbled himself. Christmas. This is one of Paul's ways of talking about Christmas in human form, that God loves you so much that he came in the flesh, in the one who we call Jesus of Nazareth. Emmanuel, God with us, God in a human body. And for his life, one of humility, again, showing us what it is to be human. 
and for us to rediscover yet again what it is and what it looks like to be created in the image of God. To the point where he became obedient to that of death, even death on the cross. Of Good Friday, for you, for me, for the brokenness of all creation. And so we come back to that bumper sticker. Do you follow Jesus this close? And that's the challenge presented for us, not just for Holy Week, but for every week. And not just today, but Monday through Saturday. And granted, we don't have the goods to do this on our own. Only by God's grace and through the power of his Holy Spirit are we able to do so. To love life and to live love and to yet again to become human in the way God intended that to be. So the question for you, people of God, what does it look like for you to follow Jesus? Not just in siloed areas of your life. Lord, you can be my God and Savior and Master when it comes to family, um, when it comes to how I drive, <laughs> when it comes to my sense of humor or other things. But then you may be going, but when it comes to this area and this area and this area, hands off. You are not my Savior and God and Lord and Master in those areas. Jesus is saying to us, no, all of it. He's to be the epicenter of everything. Do you and do I follow Jesus this close? As we continue our journey, our pilgrimage, during this holy week, may it be so. How is God challenging you? And in what ways can you come closer to Christ and to follow in his footsteps? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Hymn 323, Please Stand. I invite you to turn to page 105 in the front of your hymnals and with the whole church let us confess our resurrection faith in the words of the Apostles Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and for all of God's creation. Lord Jesus, shepherd and guardian of our souls, on this Palm Sunday, teach us to number our days aright, that we may gain a heart of wisdom. 
We pray, Lord, for our sisters and brothers in Christ, in Ukraine, and the surrounding countries. We pray, Lord, for peace. We pray on behalf of Joelle Parker and Sonny Lommers, Laura Lee Todd, A.J. Wiseman, Myra Friesner, Dakota Nyheiser, Jeff Temple, Betty Weddle, Mike Arn, Bud Menken, and Art Bauer. We give you thanks, Lord, for the gift of new life and read Robert Evans. And so, Father God, may your word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please remain where you are standing, but share the peace with those who are around you. God's peace. peace. A reminder that our offering boxes are at both exits. If you wish to um, give offering to continue the ministry, we ask that uh, you can do so online by stmarkslutheranbw.com or text 419-273-9947. remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. As we begin our pilgrimage through Holy Week, may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hymn 660, Lift High the Cross. <laughs>